Hello guys, here we are back from Canada. Oh boy, what an amazing experience Caroline and I have had. We've loved every second of our experience, our adventure in the Canadian wilderness, in the Rocky Mountains. Oh my goodness, man. It was just as good as it sounds. That, that would be the summary. Welcome back to the channel. This video is gonna be about our adventure in Canada. We walked the section E of the Great Divide Trail and I'm just gonna tell you everything about our experience while doing so, like the terrain, the mountain passes, the challenges or difficulties uh, that we found, the weather we got at this time of the year, the people we met, the campsites. But remember, the full video is coming soon, so subscribe to the channel if you don't wanna miss out on that one and I'm editing as of now and it's looking great. So if you wanna check my Instagram account, I'm posting pictures all the time, whether it's about Canada or all the other hikes that I've been doing, so you can check that out too. What an experience, guys. It's been like everything you would expect uh, about the Canadian wilderness. So it just delivers, you know? You just go there and out of blue you left. Oh, you know, if were me, I'm, I'm here in Canada, man. This Canadian scenery, the way you've seen it in the Western movies. Sometimes they had the normal campsite with the, the fire pit and whatnot, that's for hikers or for hunters and whatnot. And then you have the horse campsite. The wife and I have arrived to this horse campsite. Fire pit, picnic table, ground there to pitch a tent. Do you see the difference? The ponies go there, the small, and then the horses on the big ones. It's quite something. You feel like you're in a Western movie. If you come from Europe and you've never been to, to Canada hiking, uh, at least what we've seen more or less is a mix of Scandinavia and Switzerland. So when it comes to the wetness and the sections that are abrupt and the terrain that is difficult, that would be um, Scandinavia. The mountains, the mountain passes, that was more like Switzerland. We made 10 nights straight in the tent. So that's another difference, hiking here versus hiking in Europe. For example, if you go to Scotland, you can easily just go outside and stay one night in a hotel if it's not straight on your path. We're on our way to the Oakel Bridge Hotel. Where, where, what's gonna happen there? We're going to stay for the night. We're going to have a hamburger. If you go to Scandinavia, you don't have hotels, you have cabins. So then, of course, it's a lot more rudimentary everything, but you can still dry your clothes and sleep in a bed. So that's that. Now over here, 10 days hiking, 10 days straight in the tent. Whatever you have in your backpack, that's where there is. That's it. That changes your hiking because you, you have to plan better what you want to do. For example, I have a better med kit and repairs kit. I had one full day of emergency food. When we started a hike, we could camp anywhere we wanted. That is called White Goat Wilderness Area. Whereas the moment we got to Jasper National Park, we had to pitch a tent in designated camp spot and have a permit for the night. That was quite off-putting, but after being there, I remember telling Caroline, I extremely dislike um, having to pitch where they tell me to, especially guys, when there's fantastic landscapes and pitching spots that are beyond me. But I understand why. And as annoyed as I was yesterday, I was telling my wife, look, if they have to preserve this beauty from idiots, then I understand it. Because uh, the beauty, the scenery here is wonderful. Now, when it comes to the terrain, uh, let's start with the path. Was there a path? For the most part, you fall in a path that at times disappears, at times reappears, at times it becomes better, at times it's bad. For the most part, I would say it's very decent, but uh, again, uh, there are times when you fall in the rivers, for example, that there's no path for the most part, and you need to switch back and forth from the river banks on this side, the other side, and figure it out. In the mountain passes, for the most part, there's no path, but you have some cairns. Depending on the visibility, you may see them or not. Witness my wife going all the way to the highest point of the Great Divide Trail in Canada. This is not a hike, in my opinion, for someone who's not used to hiking in non-waymarked trails. If you're gonna start hiking a non-waymarked trail, I would advise you to, to hike something else. Overall, I think we were pretty lucky with the weather. Of course, we had our share of everything. We, we had a lot of hailing. Do you hear it? So, yeah, let's 
hailing here big time. I can, I can see the hailing. And that very day afterwards, we also had a snowstorm going uh, over the pass with low visibility. Not a very good day to be up there at about 6 p.m. I think it was, as it was getting dark too, so. We're almost back, almost back on tree line. It's been our first time using, well, we didn't have to use it, but carrying bear spray and a bear canister. So this is the bear canister right here. The bear spray, we had to leave it back in Canada because you're not allowed to fly with it and you know, you cannot take it on the plane. So, but this guy came back with us. This is one kilo. This is the, the large version of the bear canister, the bears. So we've seen a trillion of bear prints and bear poo and bear scratches on the trees and whatnot. So we knew we were in bear territory or grizzly bear territory more specifically. It's a different feeling knowing that there is a wildlife out there that can kill you. It's different, it makes your experience different and your hiking is different, especially because you know, you see the freaking poo there on the path and, and then you are like, Jesus, it's not a myth, you know, these bears exist and they're around here. Sometimes I find myself walking with the bear spray in my hands without the safety. We're a bit concerned because we've seen a second drop in and uh, I'm just walking like this, as if this was a gang, the, the finger under the trigger. Every night I allow myself to sleep more or less four to five hours. Basically, I avoided the late hours of the night and the early hours of the day because that's usually where, where the predatory behavior takes place. I was ready to fight them, trust me, to save my wife. I'm, I'm completely fine. I, I told my wife, if I die fighting a grizzly bear, to me, it's a fantastic death. I don't want to die in a hospital room being 73. Um, you know, I, I want to have a, a nice death. You know what I mean? You, you only die once and make, make it nice at least. I know this, these bears are predators. They're gonna try to catch me sleeping in the tent. It ain't gonna happen. They're gonna catch me with my bear spray in my hand and on the other hand, I have my knife. And I'm just gonna be ready to go. And then my wife was, ah, oh, I'm afraid. And then she, she just fell sleeping like a rock boy. She was so tired, man. The sounds that she was making, I've never heard those sounds in Caroline, really. She was so deeply tired, it was quite something, really. There was this place, a very dark forest, very dense, uh, it was super scary, man. What a scary movie you can make in that forest. And I really dislike pitching the tent over there. So I created a bit of a, Caroline was very afraid. So I created a bit of a bear fence. It sounds stupid, but Caroline felt better after that. Caroline, how much do you like the bear barrier I prepared for you? Oh, I love it. <laughs> you like it? I feel a lot better. <laughs> This is a very sophisticated bear barrier to defend your partner. <laughs> There's gonna be a resupplying video as well. So not only the video of the full experience and the adventure in Canada, but also uh, how we like the food we took and how we did it. A bit like the resupplying aspect of this hike. We got a bear canister. It's super heavy by itself. I think it's a kilo. Oh wow, it's really filled up to the top. It's 10, 10 days. Jesus Christ. Days. So anyway guys, the kitchen is super messy. We just met very few people, that's the truth. We went three full days without seeing a single soul. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you find it helpful. Just remember the full video is gonna come soon, so subscribe to the channel if you don't wanna miss out on that. Ask me any question you have about our experience. I'm always uh, happy to answer. I always get back to people, as I always say. See you on the trails. Bye.